Dr. Donahoe, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. Really appreciate it. Happy to be here. Now, you were the Gauss Award uh, winner for uh, this year. Tell us about your reaction to that. Well, when the president of the IMU contacted me about the award of the prize, my first feeling was one of a heavy responsibility. Uh, my thinking is that as a mathematician, I have certain flaws. I've maybe had too much industrial involvement and spent too much of my time developing, let's say, applicable math to be a really, really good mathematician. But I do feel I have an important thing to say here to the ICM. And I think in the Gauss lecture, I'll get a chance to pass along some wisdom to people in the audience. So I was happy to have the opportunity to speak here. Tell us a little bit about uh, your lecture then and some of the things that you hope uh, people will be able to take away from that. A couple of very important things have happened in the last year. There's a series of new MRI scanners coming to market made by the three major manufacturers, GE, Siemens, and Philips. And these are all based on a mathematical technology called compressed sensing. And in a little bit less than uh, 15 years, a technology has matured and is out there helping people. It's speeding up MRI scanning by, in many cases, 10x. It means the patients don't have to sit so long in the scanner. And mathematics did inspire all of that development. In the press conference, you were saying that uh, the great things about making a breakthrough is, uh, you know, you have 20 minutes to enjoy that, and then you're on to your next, uh, next uh, problem. So, so what are you working on now? Well, these days I'm interested in issues to do with deep learning, which is taking the world of AI by storm. As a mathematical idea, it's very poorly understood at the moment. But there are fundamental mathematical questions around the edges of that that become very important. And so I would like to understand the question of separating two classes in high dimensions, which is at the heart of what deep learning is trying to do. One of the classes could be doctors judge this person as sick, they judge this person as healthy. We're trying to learn how did the doctors do that and develop a mathematical formula. When you go to very large dimensional problems, understanding exactly how to separate classes like that has many interesting aspects. It's a really good example, isn't it, of the real world? Because as you say, these are issues that, uh, particularly with uh, AI, are, are being looked into at the, at the moment. How important is it for mathematicians when they're working out what to apply their, their brains to that those are real practical issues for the rest of us? I've always felt that it's important to be a scientist as well as a mathematician. By being a scientist, you understand many constraints about the problem that may impede the mathematical development, but that are absolutely fundamental for ultimate application. So unfortunately, there's a conflict in applied math between truth and beauty sometimes. The science will force you towards truth, and it's important to keep that in mind. I really envy my friends in pure mathematics because they're able to just focus on the mathematical beauty. We don't always get that in applications. Well, David, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to uh, share that with us today. Really interesting and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you so much.